Um, so the, this video, I want to explain some of the um, most important things actually from the worksheet. I ask you for uh, chapter seven on, on work and energy and also maybe some could be uh, difficult for you to understand. So I want to spend some time explaining those important concepts here. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to explain to you is on page 35, okay, uh, these three problems. So, all the ramps below are five meters high. We know that the kinetic energy of the block when reaching the bottom of each ramp will be equal to the loss of, of potential energy based on conservation of energy. We want to find the speed of the block at ground level in each case. So I'm going to use the first case as an example first. Okay. So the first case, as I can show, uh, I show you on this uh, whiteboard, is you have an object. Actually, you're not using the ramp, you just drop the object, object is going to hit the ground. So we want to find out how fast the object moves before it hits the ground. So before we learn about energy conservation principle, actually this problem can be solved very easily using uh, freefall motion, right? This is exactly freefall motion. There is a gravity, only gravity, only force acting on the object, and the object is doing a freefall motion. Okay, so now we know the object is mo moved five meters. So then from the free flow motion, we know the distance is one half gt squared. Okay, so the distance five meters, and then this is 10 meter per second squared and t squared. So we can find a t at just one second. So in other words, it takes one second to the object, for the object to move from here to here through the free fall motion. Now, what is the speed now? We know that in free fall motion, everybody should know this, right? After one second, the object gains 10 meter per second. So the velocity here should be 10 meter per second. This is one second uh, to pass, to move by meter. So this actually can be solved very easily by the free fall motion. However, we want to apply energy conservation principle okay, for this problem. How we can solve this problem from the energy conservation principle? So remember, I want to review a little bit about energy conservation principle. Um, so for energy, we talk about in our class, we focus on two types of energy. One is called kinetic energy, the other one is called potential energy. And if we add those two energy together, we call mechanical energy. So kinetic energy plus potential energy. Okay. And, and then when we say energy is conserved, we mean that the initial mechanical energy is the same as the final mechanical energy. Okay. We don't care about the middle process at all. We don't care about that. So for this case, what we need to know is what is the initial kinetic energy? What is the initial potential energy? What is the final kinetic energy? What is the final potential energy? Okay. And then if we use this mechanical energy conservation principle, which basically tells us initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy equals in the final kinetic energy plus final potential energy. That's our starting point. Okay. Again, I don't care about the middle process. So I'm going to show you why later on uh, when we talk about the other two examples. So now we go back to apply this mechanical energy conservation principle. Okay, so we look at asking ourselves, what is the kinetic energy initially? What is the potential energy initially? Remember, when we talk about potential energy, then we need to know where the reference point is, where we start to measure the height. So usually in this case, let's say the ground is our reference point. So that means that's going to be my height zero. So then I know here, kinetic energy initially is zero because I I just drop it, let it go. So initially, the object is not moving. So kinetic energy is zero. In this case, is m g h i, right? So h i acts as five meters. And in this case, final kinetic energy one half m v final squared. 
and this is zero because the reference point is just right at the bottom of the hill. Now I put these back into this equation here. Zero plus right into the mechanical energy conservation principle and then you have mghi equals one half mv final squared so the, the mass actually is not important the mass canceled out so we have g is 10 times 5 equals one half v final squared so you can solve v final <clears throat> I'm going to put over here, just do a little bit more steps, okay? So you can see this is 50, one half, and then we have V final squared equals 100, so V final is 10. You do the square root of that, so V final is 10 meter per second. <clears throat> so by using this method, we also find out actually the velocity of the object right before hits the bottom is 10 meter per second. Okay. So those are two very different methods, but they all came out with the same uh, answer. So this tells us, okay, so for sometimes the same problem, we could use different kinds of method to do it. And the nice thing about using the energy conservation principle is that if you look at the next two problems. The next two problems, this one actually, the object is sliding downhill. And then this one, the hill actually is kind of curved. Okay. So if we use Newton's laws to solve problems, then we have to find out the forces, we have to find out the component of the forces, and then we have to deal with the kin kinematic equations to solve all the all the you know, quantities in order to find out the final um, the velocity of the object before it hits the ground. But if we use mechanical energy conservation principle, okay, all I care, again, you know, I'm going to use uh, the last case. So the object is sliding down a curved. Okay, so this is five. The object is over here. So finally it's over here. If I use... Um, mechanical energy conservation principle, again, what is the, what is the kinetic energy? Zero, mghi, the height, right? Equals one half, this is my reference. So I got the same equation as what I got for the first case I, I was talking about. So this shows you again that the nice thing about the application of energy conservation principle is that first of all energy there are scalars so you don't have to worry about directions. The second case is the second reason is because energy conservation principle it doesn't not care about the middle process whether you have you drop the object from here to here or sliding down a straight inclined plane or sliding down a, a curved plane as long as the initial this is initial and final so as long as the initial case and final cases the kinetic energy potential energy you know you, you consider those two cases I don't have to care about the middle process that's a very nice thing to have and then we can apply this principle very easily. So again, we got the same thing, mghi is one half mv, so I can cancel it, mass out is 10 times five, one half, so you can find v final is 10 meter per second. So you can see that as long as the initial object is at the same height, the final object is at the same height, then we can see for those three cases, okay, it doesn't matter how the object goes from the initial to the final position, the final velocity of the object is always the same. It's always 10 meters per second for this particular case. Okay, so that's this example. 
And then the next example I want to talk about is number eight on next page, on page 36. Okay, so for this one, all right, so you have a big metal bead slides due to gravity along the upright friction-free wire, so we ignore friction, then the mechanical energy is conserved. It starts from rest at the top of the wire, uh, point A, how fast is it traveling as it passes? So you can see that it starts from A, right? And then it goes to B and D and E. You can see B and D and E, they all have the same, at the same height. So based on our example we did over here, as long as they start from the same position and they are at the same final position, so these three positions, B, D, E, they all should have the same speed, okay? But C actually is not because the C actually is much lower. Okay, C is much lower. So from A to C, the height change here is much bigger. So that's why the maximum speed occurs at point C because it gains more. Because you know when A is over here, it goes to C. There's a there's a bigger potential energy change here. That's why the C is going to, at C point, the bead is going to gain more kinetic energy. Okay, so that's um, eight. And then on page 37, you can see actually this, you know, the this is actually the application of a conservation of energy for different kind of a scenario. So for this one, you have somebody is doing a free fall motion. And then for this one here, this is a pendulum. So you can see for pendulum here, so the potential energy, how the potential is changing to kinetic energy and how the kinetic energy is changing back to potential energy. But the overall mechanical energy, in other words, the kinetic energy plus potential energy should be a constant. So, uh, so that's that page. And then the last page here, page 40, okay, talks about the difference between energy and momentum. So I think the, the solution actually gives you very good explanation for each problem. So I'm not going to spend time here unless you have questions and I'm going to address the issue again.